Hey guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. Today, we have seen Bitcoin dump. It has broken through its support zone of $47,000. Could this be because of Elon Musk's tweet? Are we going to recover? What are some signs of a bear market or signs that we are still in a bull market? That's what we're going to look at in today's video. I have covered it in the live stream, but I'm doing a shorter, more succinct video right now. So make sure you hit the like button, show your love, show your support, subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon, so you can be updated when I go live as well. We t discussed a lot in that live stream and they're very, very valuable. People are finding a lot of help from them. Uh, lastly, make sure you're following my Instagram and Twitter so you can get updated with that. Q and A's, see my portfolio on Instagram. And we're also, before I dive into it, we're going to look at Cardano as well today because that is showing some good signs of some strength, breaking into new recent highs against Bitcoin pairing, which is another sign that I think we've still got a little bit of room to move in this. But we're going to look at the charts and dive into it a little bit more. So let's first have a look at the Elon Musk tweet and go from there. First things first, here we are. Elon Musk's Twitter profile he has posted this, Tesla has suspended vehicle purchases using Bitcoin. We are concerned about rapidly increasing use of fossil fuels for Bitcoin mining and transactions, especially coal, which has the worst emissions of any fuel. Cryptocurrency is a good idea on many levels and we believe it has a promising future, but this cannot come at a great cost to the environment. Tesla will not be seeing, will not be selling any Bitcoin and we intend to use it for transactions as soon as mining transitions to more sustainable energy. We're also looking at other cryptocurrencies that use less than 1% of Bitcoin's energy transaction. So they've got some responses here. One from yours truly. The other more important reply is from Pomp. Pomp, I was saying, Elon, you realize that 79% of miners use renewable energy, right? This energy store story has been debunked over and over again. We've also got Michael Saylor chiming in here. Ironic because no incremental energy is used in a Bitcoin transaction. The energy is used to secure the crypto asset network and the net impact on fossil fuels consumption over time will be negative, all things considered. Exactly. So basically he's saying to now, in order to create Bitcoin, yes, it costs some energy, but to make transactions, it doesn't cost any energy in that sense. You have to pay a fee, but you have to pay fees in no matter what you use in, in life. So there's, that's not really an argument in this case. That's what Michael Saylor is saying here. Now we've got Peter Schiff chiming in as well. Got to give him a little like for his uh, eggplant emoji and uh, make sure that we can get Tesla to accept gold. We've got to do it for Peter Schiff. If you're not familiar with the whole saga there, fill yourself in. Peter Schiff is a gold bug, doesn't like Bitcoin. DMs are open. Solana is chiming in as well. Go over, like it up. Solana is very cheap on, on that front and basically doesn't have the emission costs like, uh, like Bitcoin. However, Solana is nowhere near as decentralized as Solana. So keep that in mind as well, folks. So that's the tweet that looks like it has Let's like that up. There you go. That's affected the market. Now, you guys have been following for a long time. Come on. Most of you have, haven't you? Let me know in the comments. This is what we've been following. $60,500 on a daily chart is the 18th of April. Remember that date. It's this bar. This has been highlighted for weeks and weeks and weeks. We need to get above that to secure a bullish momentum shift. We have not reached that point and like I've posted for weeks, I still see the cryptos as being strong, the altcoins, right? The Bitcoin is the one that is showing signs of weakness. That was the video titles that I got slandered for and slammed for because people only look at titles and they don't watch the videos and uh, understand what the content is. Anyway, I'll, I'll remove my, my disgust and my emotion from that. Let's just look at what's here on the bars. We saw a dip, we saw some more dips, and we saw a final dip on the 10th of May. The, the volume here has been bought up a lot, but we happen to break down from that volume. Uh, yeah, from this bar here on the 10th, that was on much higher volume than these, these previous days. That's why I think that this dip into the 40s is probably going to be longer than this one day here. I think this is just a, basically like a hopeful rally. People are buying the dip. You've heard that, you've seen it across Twitter. Buy the dip, I'm buying the dip, blah, blah, blah. I'm not so sure just yet. It could be. It very well could be. Just like I saw this come in 
that was the bottom. We had a reversal. It was 11 straight days down. Let me know in the comments if there was anyone else you know talking about 11 straight days down and how significant that is to a market. I would love to follow them. But this 11 days is not seen in the Bitcoin market ever. Go back and, and test it. I don't remember seeing it in these last two, one and a half bull markets. The furthest we got was seven days, eight days down against the trend. All right, so the significance of that is that it's a momentum shift. If you get multiple days down, more than three from a peak, it's very severe, it's significant. The beauty about this is I think we're still in a uh, long-term bull market, and I think this is just enough to hold us up for the short term. And that short term could be weeks, which we've already seen. We're into our almost a month now, but I think it may be multiple months. I need to see a sign of a reversal at a bottom, and I don't see that just yet. This day hasn't finished. We are only three and a half hours into this day. The volume is looking strong. And so if we do get a big move up, we start to get into the 54s again, that would be a good first sign to say that, all right, maybe that was the dip and we're looking to at least reaccumulate in the $50,000 levels before we move up again. So that's what I at least want to see first to hold this up. Uh, from this point, otherwise I could expect further downside and just to remove some of these, well, the next downside targets are at around these lows here to test at 44 and the 43. So around that 42 to 44. And then the next parts are these lows here. So this is the next level that we'll look to test is around the 41, 42 level. If you happen to see it spike into 39, I wouldn't be too concerned because I think it's still between that 39 and the 44 level. That's if this level doesn't hold. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but that's what I'm keeping an eye out for. Removing some of the, the lines here so we can get a clearer picture. Our 50% level is down at 34K. But if we move this back to a level that we saw before the breakout, which is a significant low, then that's bringing us back to around 41K. And that's why I still have that in mind for a retest. I think it's still possible. And if we get a retest in those that, like I said, 39 to 44, so somewhere in that low 40s area, that's going to be another strong signal. I would expect to see big volume come in, a nice trend reversal, a nice bar pattern to show that. Uh, that is pretty much my best case scenario so I can buy the dip. Like you know, I had my buy level at 46. I did not buy it at 47. I had a feeling that things were going to go lower, especially after 11 days down. The altcoin market has done pretty well. So that's what I see on Bitcoin. Let's have a look at some of the alts to understand what I'm looking at when it comes to seeing some strength in the rest of the market. ADA is a fantastic example. ADA USD is holding up. It's having some nice swing levels above its old all-time highs after the breakout. So Cardano against the US dollar is doing well. What I really want to see is Cardano against Bitcoin, which is broken to new recent highs at 3,255 Satoshis. So it's making gains against Bitcoin while Bitcoin is dropping. That to me is showing there's some still there's still some strength in the altcoin market. And I'm just going to use Cardano and Ethereum. So Cardano, Cardano ETH is just starting to hold its ground again. I'm not sure whether we will hold this level because ETH has been quite strong. And looking at ETH, so Cardano is looking strong. I'm still uh, comfortable with the position on Cardano like we've talked about over the last couple of weeks, breaking out. ETH, it is looking all right. It's looking good. We are at tops, so it does just get way more volatile at these levels as to be expected. We've seen big volume on the reversals. So yesterday we saw a top in play. You got a, a wick out to the top, nice spike down. Uh, today, I want to see some more volume come into it. Otherwise, maybe we'll get a couple of days against the trend. The trend is up and we'll get a couple of days against it. So, so far, we've seen two days down. We've broken the previous inside bar and a day down. So that's probably going to pause the market for a little bit. I don't think we'll, ex I'm not expecting an all-time high on Ethereum again over the next few days. We've seen quite a few days of just up onlys. And so that's what I'm seeing for ETH. But the ETH BTC chart continues to uh, stretch to new grounds. So ETH BTC, which is obviously a main player against Bitcoin, also doing very well. So this is what I'm looking at uh, to understand what is coming next, at least my opinion, of course. So I still see strength in the altcoin markets based on the strong altcoins, which are leading the market. Ethereum is leading the market. Cardano has been leading the market. You know, it's at new all-time highs again. 
and they're increasing in their Bitcoin value. So people ask for what are some signs? That to me is a sign that we still have some left in the altcoin space. Things can change. That's why I say stick around the channel, subscribe, bell notification icon, because if I see a bit of a trend reversal in these bars, then obviously I'll put a video out. I'm doing daily videos, sometimes twice a day, which is exactly what we've got today. Uh, make sure you're also on Instagram. So much easier for me to update you guys on Instagram and on Twitter when I see a chart, just like talking about right here, Ave, uh, Ave. Ave had a big spike up into its all-time high, dropped off, and now we are coming back again as Bitcoin has fallen. You know, like, just take, pay attention to these cryptos that are skyrocketing against their BTC value while Bitcoin is dropping. There is something going on here, and this chart looks great. It's posted on my Twitter at the breakout, so go for gold. Subscribe on, uh, tw follow on Twitter and on Instagram. All right, so we've looked at those pairs. We looked at Ethereum, we looked at Cardano. That's what's going on there. I've got my notes here. Um, bear market, I don't think so. Looking at support for Bitcoin, the levels that I'm looking at, and then strong alts we've looked at. Check them against the Bitcoin values. I know people just look at USD, but if you want to get a broader understanding of the market, definitely check against the Bitcoin value. The last thing I want to have a look at here is what to do next and what I've been talking about in uh, the Investor Accelerator group, which you can find a link to in the description down below. That's the membership crew that are learning about trading, investing, their portfolio management. What I talked about there is consolidating into other cryptocurrencies, consolidating into cryptos, which you are strong on. So the small shitty positions that you've got on something that you're gambling on, maybe it's not so much of an interest. But the stuff that you've put a fair bit of money into that you're not quite sure, is it a good coin, thoughts on this, those sort of coins, that's the stuff that I'm consolidating into projects which, which I am sure on, like Ethereum, Cardano, those sorts of things. Reason is, if I see the market tank against me, I'm very sure on Ethereum and Cardano longer term. Ethereum more so. That's why I want to be in those positions. If it tanks against me, of course, so that I'm not losing out into some altcoin that I'm not so sure on. Now, I've done that, I might not get the huge gains that I would see on those smaller altcoins, the real speculative stuff, but if the market goes up, Ethereum's leading the market, Cardano is leading the market, which means that I will still see some gains. I'm just not holding USD, fiat, whatever it is, stable coins, and watching the market take off without me. So I'm still involved in the market, but in a less risky way. That's essentially what I'm talking about when I'm consolidating. Plus, it takes my mind off so many other cryptocurrencies which I've been looking at and it starts to really spread your energy thin. And at these times, your energy is burnt right now. I, I guarantee the majority of your energy is burnt just feeling what's going on in the market. I saw it today on the live. There was 5,200 people on the live stream, which is probably the biggest one we've had uh, on the channel to date. And the comments are just flowing and flowing. So... The point I'm making here is to understand market sentiment and what's going on out there and understand your own trading and investing psychology. If you've tuned out by now, maybe it's my voice, maybe it's what I'm talking about, but maybe you need to do some more research when it comes to investing. But if you're still here, great work, guys. Go and check out some videos on the channel around uh, the crypto exit crypto strategy. So my exit strategy over there, that'll give you a list of questions that you can ask yourself and you'll be able to create your own plan from that. There's no one that's going to tell you exactly what's going to what you're able to do for your own goals or your own future, but at least that can give you a, a plan and you can learn to fish for yourself. That's what I'm about on the channel. That's what I'm about in the Investor Accelerator. And if you're not ready to uh, join the group, that's fine. There's also a free newsletter that you can learn more about trading and investing in that. So we look at cryptos, we look at stocks, and we talk about the property cycle as well. There's a link to that in the description down below. Free to sign up, free newsletter once every two weeks, sometimes every week as well, but we don't hit you with any more than that, usually just the updates and the good stuff. So that's my update for today. Elon Musk, maybe he's dumped the market, maybe he's done us all a favor. We've looked at market leaders, we've looked at my view on the market, should we fall further from here? If we see a bear market, that's why I position myself in a more dis defensive uh, strategy. Or if we happen to go up from here, it is a defensive portfolio, but I'm still going to continue with the gains. So that's the way I like to look at it in terms of a win-win. Now, I've got one more post that I want to show you on Twitter. It's from an OG of the 2017 bull market, Chris Dunn. He does still make content on YouTube, but not the, the format that I've got like this. It's just sort of a lot of lives, lives, I should say. But this here, read this over and over again. At the end of the day, 
So if you don't have an exit strategy, just read this. At the end of the day, we have to manage trades based on our own risk tolerances and goals. If you've made life-changing amounts of money over the past year, ask yourself questions like, how would I feel if Cardano fell by 80%? Would I regret not selling some? So insert your coin, insert your percentage, and then ask yourself that. If it's not life-changing amounts of money, then you should be able to sleep and this shouldn't affect you whatsoever. If you're thrown something that you can afford to lose and it goes down 90%, you don't give a crap, then this isn't for you. But if you've put a lot of money in there, like I've had some questions and people have gone up two, 300%, even a thousand percent, ask yourself this question and that will help you out a hell of a lot. I hope I've been able to answer your questions on this video. If you found it valuable, hit the like button down below and subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon, follow us on Twitter. We've just about to hit 12,000 followers now after just crash, crushing through 10,000. Instagram, daily Q&As, plus you can see my portfolio update over there. Blockfolio, if you want to trade and track your portfolios, there's a link to Blockfolio down below. Nice, beautiful app to tr uh, track your portfolios. And also Swiftex, the uh, the Aussie exchange for, for you guys in Australia that want to trade cryptocurrencies. Plus a link to Binance for everyone else in Australia and internationally. Link to those are down below. Guys, thank you very much for your time. I'll catch you at the next video or, of course, live stream. Until then, have more fun to get more done.